What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Scarlet Witch movie. Um, Deadpool tracking down to 160 to 165 million, Brian. And you also mentioned that initially the estimate was 200, which is interesting. Kevin also has spoken on the Marvel podcast, Brian, that Brian has really been on it. I haven't, but he's, he's listening to all the details. And the Roosters were turned down for Avengers 5 due to budget concerns. Brian, this is our Marvel roundup. Let's start with Scarlet Witch movie. Brian, I have always said Elizabeth Olsen just wants to say no more mutants. That's it. That's what this is about. Your thoughts. That's great. I'm I'm not I'm not here for that right now. <laughs> stay stay under the rubble for a little bit yes. longer. Yeah, Doctor Strange too. I understand that the Avengers lineup needs you. I get that part of it for Secret Wars. As a as a name actress and someone people are familiar with, but you know if, what I would tell that, tell her, Brian. I would I would tell her, Kevin. If I was Kevin, I would be like, listen, uh, we don't have a, a a voice actress for Scarlet Witch on the X Men '97 show. When that time comes, we can sh- put you in there and you voice Scarlet Witch. But we're not doing no House of M live action joint, not just yet. So that take it or leave it. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I would say. It's like I, that's put. This is the classic putting the cart before the horse. I mean, we have not even launched the live action version of a, of a mutant universe. We're not at all ready for that seminal moment in the comics to come to fruition, regardless of how much she wants it. And a Scarlet Witch solo movie, which is rumor. So the rumor is it's going to be announced at D twenty three, not necessarily at Comic Con. Is there buzz for that? Like, is there really an no. audience for that? Is that a, is that a hit movie in the making if they put that up? Brian, if it has anything to do with House of M, Brian, I'm out. I don't see a reason for the Scarlet Witch. Nobody's asking for nobody. Everybody thinks she's under the rubble. Everybody's wondering if she's still under the rubble. Nobody cares right now. So I, 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 I don't get this, uh, this announcement. I mean, she's not old. <laughs> no. or getting older she has plenty of time i don't think marvel will be in a rush to recast scarlet witch in the meantime so there's plenty of time i mean her character's been left in a place where they can bring her back but yeah. she doesn't have to be around she, she doesn't have to do anything or if anything you could you could if you care that much you know you've got other ways you know we'll talk about agatha in a bit you've got other, other ways to leave her fingerprints elsewhere in the universe and then when the time is right you can resurrect her and then she, you can get to that storyline. But, and she can, that could be 10 years from now. And I'm like, so what? Like, she don't need the, I don't think she needs the money at this point. I wouldn't hope. I mean, after the work she's already done for the MCU and kind of in other, other parts of her career. So I don't know. I, I just don't think like, look, I mean, we've gone through the whole female led superhero action type franchises before. And this is a character that obviously has a little more cachet, but. I don't see it. Like, I mean, if they think yeah. like this, like I'm not looking at this as like, okay, mark your calendar for summer 2026 or summer 2027. Like I gotta be like, everyone's going to be like, I gotta be there for the Scarlet yeah. Witch movie. I don't think so. Yeah. Deadpool tracking now 160 to $165 million opening weekend versus Brian, the 200 million initially estimated, right? What do you think that means? Uh, well, I mean, the 200 was probably a little bit rosy, but I think we're—I think this number made some sense to me because the the second one was around 130 without mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman. So you throw Wolverine in here. You won't, this is the only Marvel movie of the year. Promotional campaign seems to be going effective. Yeah, I think bump from 130 to 160 makes sense to me. As we said, a lot of this this movie is going to be very front end loaded, in my opinion. Um, We'll see. I mean, unless the reviews are spectacular and people are like, I got to see this three times, I think you're going to get a, ver- a relatively high percentage of your box office in that opening weekend worldwide. I think we, you, normally, I think most movies is about a third. I can see this one being more like 40% of the total box comes in, in weekend one. So if you're yeah. looking at 160 US, a little more than that international, you know, that puts you about maybe 350, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, as we said, that billion dollar number is it's going to be close. Like, it's not yeah. a lock. It's its within reach, not a lock, but, you know, it, it'll be close if that's the number. So I believe it. I think that's i think that's fair. 
when I first saw the 200, that was long range tracking. I was like, oh, well then, then you're going for, you know, now you're going after like Force Awakens, Avengers 1, like you're going after some real, real totals there. And that would have certified the billion dollars. But this I think is, is probably in the ballpark um, for an R rated movie, um, which still will knock some people out that would have gone to some of the other films. There's younger, mm -hmm. younger kids, like just won't be allowed to see it. Yeah. Um, Do you so, think, Brian, that the drop off of the second weekend, because it's almost like seeing a comedy movie, you've already seen all the punchlines, prizes, but once all, all those are revealed, why do I want to go see this again? That will be the question to ask. Or and you'll know because they can you'll do it. know. Yeah. You'll know because if that second weekend is is fifty percent down, then it's gonna make a billion dollars. That's good staying power for a movie with this kind of open. If it's like sixty, sixty five percent down, probably won't make a billion. That'll suggest that people were happy with what they saw. They're fine with it, but they didn't tell their friends, Hey, I wanna go back two more times. Yeah. So Brian, Kevin has been yeah. very talkative as of late. Um, they have their Marvel podcast, Brian. What uh, what do you think of the latest of what Kevin has spoken is significant? A good start for the podcast. They get Kevin Feige for episode one. They bring Brad Winderbar for episode two. We've got quotes from both. What I think is interesting, because we talked about some of what Kevin said in our last show, there is something else he said, and it actually was in context of talking about Deadpool and Wolverine that did, I didn't see it get picked up online. Um, and I went back and listened to it a couple of times just to make sure I had his context correctly. So I'm going to paraphrase a bit, but I got the quote in my head. He was talking about Hugh Jackman in particular and how personal that was to him because of obviously Kevin kind of got his start on the Brian Singer X-Men franchise where he was sort of, remember that's the rumor like Kevin was in the ear of the actors telling him like this is how it is in the comics. And he, even though he was like a production assistant, and so he was talking about bringing Hugh back to do this version of Logan. And he was saying, the trick is it gives an actor like Hugh a chance to do something new with his character without compromising the integrity of a movie as good as Logan, which gave you a good end point Excellent, for yes. his character. But then he goes, he goes, that may be a peek into the future of things we can do with other actors and that not getting picked up to me was like when i heard it i was like i went back and listened i was like no he's saying what i think he's saying he's saying this is the roadmap i think to rdj to anybody that's played these roles in the past he's like there's a way now a template that we're using that we've used with wolverine where we can bring them back in another incarnation of their character to do something new and different. And it, it lets us have that conversation and maybe have those characters come. I think he, for him to say that's a peek into the future is he's not saying that by accident. He's telling you that's happening already. It's already in the hopper somewhere else. Yeah, of course. It's life model decoy. So I don't know. Again, he doesn't say word. RDJ, but I mean, that, no, that's no, who but I it's... thought of first when he said it, like, with all the talk about possibilities and things of that nature, <clears throat> it, it it's what Marvel has to do, Brian, in order to get back to where they were, right? In order to continue doing what we've enjoyed and not enjoyed thus far, hopefully they can get back on track. But uh, they got to make money. Unfortunately, they've turned it into that. Now, the... We just got done talking about a Scarlet Witch movie. She would actually qualify for this too, technically, right? His comment, which is like, you're going to do a movie and somehow it's going to be different. But I'm just saying the way he said it, and if guys, you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. He said, you can, you can hear in his voice him playing with you as he says it, which means they clearly have already signed somebody else that you know well to play a new version of the character they've already played. And we'll just wait to see exactly who he's talking about, but... Anyway, and I don't think it's more than one. I don't think it's one, an isolated case. He's saying it's a template. So yeah. it's coming. Whether you like it or yeah. not, he, he is definitely yeah. going back to his Rolodex to bring yeah. back yeah. people he yeah. knows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, Brian. Let's see if he can pull it off, Brian, if people are, are not uh, falling for the banana in the tailpipe routine. Let's speaking see. Speaking of, by the way, speaking of, Axel F 
not as bad as I would have thought. I watched it on Netflix. I didn't think it was that bad. The new uh, Beverly Hills Cop movie. Brian, I started watching it and I just got distracted and I, and I got to go back to it. I got to watch it probably it's tonight or something. Bad. I got to give it a give it a watch. I'll give I it a watch. I just think all those original cast members were having fun and it, it was it had the spirit of the original. I actually watched the original before I watched this one just to kind of reacquaint myself. That's and if you guys I haven't watch seen that it, movie every time it's on, Brian. The actual banana and the tailpipe <laughs> is in that movie. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That is that is one of my favorite Eddie Moore, Eddie Murphy films. Um yeah. <clears throat> The Russos. Yeah. Were turned down for Avengers 5 due to budget concerns. Elaborate, Brian. What do you think is happening here? <laughs> what happened there? What happened? So there's a rumor from the hot, a report from the hot mic that the Russos called up Marvel and said, we'll come back and do Avengers 5. And Disney and Marvel said no. Uh, and the reported or rip, or just so did they hear him out? Uh, the story makes it indicate like it was a pretty short conversation. They offered their services and Marvel said, thank you, no thank you. And the wow. reported issue they have is that Marvel is trying to rein in their spending and is concerned that if they bring the Russos back, that will not be consistent with that. Marvel is correct in the sense that since Endgame, the Russos have spent a lot of studio money for very oh, little yeah. return. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. The Gray Man, <laughs> Citadel. This rumor, uh, they're doing this thing for Netflix called The Electric State. Rumored budget on that is $370 million. So I can see where Disney would say, yes, we appreciate all the work you did, but... We need to find someone who can give us an Avengers movie on a hundred and fifty dollar, hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Yeah, yeah. They haven't had a good track record after their departure from the MCU. So, well, they also could, in fairness, they also could have said, "We offer our services, provided that we have the keys to whatever budget we want." They could have said it that way. We don't know. As I said, I, I'm my interest in having them come back is limited unless Marcus and McFeely are coming with them. Yes, I was going to uh, uh, allude to that because uh, that is a big... Because we've seen what they've done without that tandem, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it hasn't... It's been consistently not as huge or as... Or, or, or even perhaps, Brian, great as no. what we thought you could... They could do. Um, since they had Endgame and Infinity War. And, and Brian went to Soldier, Brian. They were on a roll, Brian. But it was in tandem with those writers, correct? Everyone. So Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. Same writers, same directors, all the way through. If I were the Russos, I'd be making different type of phone calls. So yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, all that's happening with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Scarlet Witch movie, what what that all involves i don't know if we actually even need it right now certainly if certainly not if she's trying to do what we think she's trying to do i'm trying to say rather uh deadpool that second weekend is going to be very interesting that's the weekend that everybody's going to be watching brian especially the mcu uh kevin um, the Marvel podcast, it'll be very interesting to see what else comes out of that podcast. Um, if Kevin makes a quarterly appearance, I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting, but uh, lots to hear about on that podcast. And the Rus Russos, like Brian has said, they were working with uh, some writers that really helped them deliver spectacular films, Brian. And in, in Winter Soldier, Infinity War, and Endgame. Those are classics. But obviously, now people are being more um, <clears throat> particular about how much money they want to spend on things, right? And the numbers are getting crazy. And for no return, it's just not the sort of business that we want to be in. So they're, very, they're, t they're taking a very close look at, at all those things. So let's see how the MCU, what MCU we get in the next uh, few years, but um, certainly a lot of things are happening. 
Um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!